Comme l'open data, le cloud est une autre des thématiques que nous allons suivre tout au long de cette journée. Et il est temps de l'aborder dans sa dimension euh, business. Red Hat est un sponsor essentiel de l'Open World Forum depuis euh, le commencement. Et le plus grand distributeur de software open source. Quels sont les bénéfices du logiciel libre face aux enjeux du cloud computing J'accueille Werner Knoblich, qui est le vice-président et directeur Europe Middle East Africa. Bonjour. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Je parle un peu français, mais pas assez bien pour ma présentation. Je peux la faire en allemand ou en anglais. Et je pense que c'est mieux dans la langue de Shakespeare. This was the difficult part, so I can switch to the easy part, talking about open source, open standards, in the cloud computing. But let me start this journey by going a couple of years back. So let's switch 30 years back and go to the 80s. What was the situation in the 80s? We had two great companies with Sun and DEC offering a complete stack, but with also a big problem, you were completely locked in, okay, top to bottom, with all the you know, negative sides associated to lock-in. Jump ahead another 10 years, we had the, in the 90s, Microsoft came in, and we all know what the lock-in was there, um, mainly driven through, you know, through productivity tools on the desktop. Then the millennium came, and Red Hat, I think we opened the millennium with introducing open source technologies to the enterprise with our enterprise Linux offering, with virtualization, and also with middleware technology, uh, with our JBoss technology, bringing it to the enterprise. So let's look, what are the other companies, the big players are doing in the, in the space of you know, open source, open standards, and so on. So let's look at Oracle. When you look at Oracle, according to InfoWorld, the issue is that Oracle is almost like an infrastructure you can't get rid of. Or in spite of its weak cloud strategy, Oracle is profiting handsomely from the cloud movement. If anybody listened to the earnings call of uh, Oracle two days ago, Larry Ellison made an interesting statement and says, I don't care if the cell of the x86 servers go down to zero, because I'm not interested in selling other people's IP. He's not interested because he cannot make 40 plus percent margin, okay? Because he cannot lock in the customer. So let's look at Microsoft. In 2001, Steve Ballmer said, Linux is cancer. Then six years later, he said, I would love to see all open source innovation happen on top of Windows. Another year later, he said, are our products likely to be open sourced? Absolutely no. Then in 2010, Bob Muglia said, I think you can expect to see Microsoft continuing to embrace open source, followed by open source is an established part of the IT industry, followed by there will be open source software incorporated into probably all or most of Microsoft's enterprise products over a period of time. Sounds to me quite confused you know, when you go there through the history. And on top of this, Bob is actually not anymore with Microsoft. Talking about VMware, another very important I think, player in the cloud space. VMware created a bill of rights for developers. When you read it, there's a very interesting you know, statement which could highlight it here, which says, great platforms enable great applications, but in the past, lock-in has often been the price paid for embracing platforms. This must not happen again. We as Reddit 100% agree with this statement. The problem is this comes from VMware. VMware is doing 99% plus of their revenue with closed source technology. So I hope this comes true, but uh, we have not seen it yet. So we think the future needs to be open, and with the Red Hat Cloud offering, um, we think that the future is open. And I want to explain to you a little bit why this is the case by going through what are the parts of a Red Hat Cloud offering, what are the different ingredients, and how are they built? So to give you an idea on you know, how we build our products. Let's start with 
you know, Linux. Everybody knows, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. How is it built? It is built based on hundreds and thousands of different um, projects in the community where then we create, you know, our Fedora community-driven Linux distribution, and after that we create an enterprise product completely under an open source license, which we offer to enterprise customers with all the values around an enterprise subscription. But very important, it's built from projects in the community, okay? Where in terms of Linux, it's the Linux kernel, it's OpenJDK, it's GNOME, and many, many others. So one important part. Their statement from um, uh, IT world, in other words, no matter where you use operating system, data center, cloud, physical, or virtual, Red Hat Enterprise Linux should deliver the same performance. Hyperside, that's a pretty important piece of news. The platform that can deliver the most seamless cloud experience is the platform that will work best in the enterprise. Let's switch to middleware, JBoss. How is the product built? It's built based on different projects, again, from the open source community. Now, different projects, be it now Seam, be it you know, Hibernate, you know, different projects, but built in the exactly same way, based on an open source community, built into a community product, and then out of this, we're doing an enterprise offering, 100% based on an open source license, with enterprise values to the end customers. Again, very important. What is uh, you know, Gartner saying about it? Reddit is often positioned as the one top three platform, uh, Java platforms and enterprise editions technology providers along with IBM and Oracle. So in the Java space, if you're looking for an open source alternative, it is us. Talking about the next ingredient, virtualization. We also have now an offering of you know, enterprise virtualization. Guess how it's built? It's built based on community-driven projects. Where they, in this case, you have Libver, the Linux kernel, the KVM community. Out of this, you have then um, open source you know, uh, product offerings. And then again, out of this, we create our enterprise offering, completely based on open source technology with open source licenses with big communities behind it. Very, very important. And also there, like InfoWorld, um, made also a statement that Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization has all of the essential management capabilities and comes closest to VMware in having all the ingredients to support a scalable infrastructure. Again, very, very powerful. Now, next, the newest thing is around, we call it Cloud Forms, where it's now a product offering for building and managing a hybrid cloud. I don't want to go bore you and go through the details on what is exactly behind it, what is important, how it's built. Again, it is built based on projects out of the open source community. So again, the same principles where now we have different projects like Delta Cloud or Spacewalk and so on, um, feeding into this new offering, which is built again the same way as Linux is built. It's built the same way as the middleware got built. It's built the same way as virtualization is built, uh, offered with an open source license. Um, Community, uh, based on community projects, very, very important. Again, what do some analysts or press um, say about it? Red Hat Stake is compelling. The true promise of the cloud is the ability to provision resources as needed, and if you're using a proprietary platform, your options for those resources will be limited. I think most important, the argument for open source is perhaps strong, stronger than ever in any other area of IT. So open source plays a key, key role in uh, cloud computing, and I will talk about it a little bit more later on. And now the newest addition is what we call OpenShift, is a platform as a service offering for people who develop on open source. So it gives a developer in a development environment and uh, a rich set of different um, development tools and languages which are fully supported, be it PHP, be it Python, be it uh, um, Ruby, be it Java. Um, and it's an offering which is currently completely for free for developers that can go online to openshift.reddit.com uh, uh, and start developing because everything is provided and they don't have to worry about you know, back-end infrastructure uh, or licenses and so on. Again, how is it built? exactly the same way as all our products are built, based on open source projects out of the community, where we create then community uh, um, offerings, 
and then creating an enterprise offering. Always built the exact same way. It was very successful with Linux, and we continue this, this successful you know, uh, pattern with all the other uh, product offerings. What again, what are the, some analysts saying about it? Reddit has bolstered its cloud offerings with the release of platform as a service offering for developers and a new software to enable infrastructure as a service. OpenShift could emerge as an open source alternative to Microsoft Windows Azure pass based cloud offering. I think it's a very, very strong uh, statement. OpenShift is, is open, is, is everything is open source. Because it's all based on there, it's, it's, it's delivered as a service currently. So you go online, it's delivered as a service. It's, and it's completely for free. You can go. Right, it's not open source. There is a promise to make it open source, but it's not. Yeah. It's because it's, it's just, it just got launched. It's, like it's right now, you can go online, and all the ingredients behind it is open source. Um, so now, what's the situation? Classical customers more and more are very attracted to cloud offerings from different suppliers, be it, you know, be it an IBM, be it a Google, be it an Amazon, or uh, whoever. So you have the different cloud providers with very attractive offerings. And now customers decide to put certain work workloads into um, certain cloud providers, which is great. But if you do this efficiently, what you need to do is you have to program very detailed to it, the API which is offered by your cloud provider. And the API from, a, from cloud provider A is not the same than the API from the cloud provider B or cloud provider C or cloud provider D, which is a real problem. Because cloud on one side have huge benefits and can you know, deliver great value, but also there's an absolutely huge risk. Cloud can become the mother of all lock-ins if it's not done right can be, be the worst lock-in ever. Because if you don't ensure portability between clouds, you are completely stuck. If you have pretty much everything in the cloud, because your data center is completely outsourced to a cloud provider, more or less, um, then you're even more stuck than you are probably today or uh, have been in the past. So you have a situation where you're in one cloud and you cannot move your data or your applications um, from a cloud provider A to cloud provider B. And we all know when you're in this situation, Vendors will leverage it and will charge premium prices, and you don't get any more a good value for what you're paying. So, with this, it's absolutely essential that when you, we talk about cloud computing, to adhere to open standards and ensure interoperability between different clouds. Where, for example, in our um, uh, when it comes to Red Hat, we're driving a standard called Delta Cloud, which exactly provides this portability between different clouds so that you as a customer are not locked in to one specific cloud provider, which is a big, big problem. So portability is absolutely essential. Without this, cloud is probably very, very, very dangerous. Okay? So with this, I can just say it's at the end, It's all about choice, because if you have choice, you know, you have competition, you get real value, so it's all about choice, and it's all about being open. With this, thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup.